these are the reasons you should practice yin yoga. Well, they're not my reasons. I'm just going to read you an excerpt from a book on yin yoga and perhaps why you should practice yoga to calm your thoughts, to calm your body. It's a hectic world and with all the great demands in this hectic world, you need a good practice. You need something to soothe you. And I'm not going to pretend to be an expert on yoga, but mindfulness, meditation, yoga, tai chi, I do tai chi a lot. They're all very helpful, but yin yoga makes sense to me. So this is a book from, I think, is it Diane Paler? Anyway, it's a, it's, it's, it's a yin yoga book. Just look up for a Diane or Paler, something like that. It's, I've got it written there somewhere on the top of my files. This is an e-book. Anyway, I'm going to start reading. Yin yoga poses generally aren't so different from the poses practiced in other forms of yoga, but there are a few special considerations to keep in mind. Yin postures are generally done seated, while other yoga styles like power, inyasa or bikram involve many standing sequences. Since yin poses often focus on the lower body, it's easier to hold the poses for an extended period while seated. The alignment of a pose should not cause stress or pain to any area of the body. For example, if the intention of the pose is to stress the connective tissues of the hip joint and the manner in which you take the pose causes pain in the knee area, you should modify the pose based on your personal anatomy to alleviate any pain. To stress the deep connective tissues around a joint, you must keep those muscles relaxed while you hold a pose. If the muscles are tense, then the stretch won't target the connective tissues. It's important to note that the only muscles you need to relax while in a yin pose are the muscles specific to the focus area. For instance, if the pose focuses on the hips, it's not necessary to engage your arm muscles. Yin poses involve long hold times. Once you've come into a pose and have arrived at your edge, it's time to become still and settle into the pose. You want to hold each pose for a challenging amount of time. You can hold them for as long as 20 minutes if you like. The long hold time not only allows the deep connective tissues to be stressed and stretched to build deeper inner strength, but also promotes the therapeutic clearing of injuries, trauma, and repetitive movement patterns stored in the body. In some cases, holding a yin pose can cause energy, known as chi, or blood to be restricted in certain areas. A yang pose is then provided as a follow-up to help get things moving again before the next long yin pose. Now this is on joint tissue and ligament health. The idea of holding a yoga posture for a long time to stretch deep connective tissues may sound intimidating at first. But the truth is that yin yoga can improve the health of your joints, ligaments, and bones. While we hold the posture in stillness, the deep stretching occurs from the stress or tension placed on the tissues. Although the most popular styles of exercise are yang-like and train the muscles through quick repetitive movements, yin yoga is often called the quiet practice because the results don't happen immediately. However, over time, the deeper connective tissues become thicker longer and stronger why does that sound so wrong why is this beneficial to our health as we age we lose stability and mobility in our joints and our bodies become stiffer oh jesus christ cultivating stronger and elongated tissues through yin yoga helps us with mobility and flexibility as we age oh fuck i'm a dirty cunt um <laughs> um yeah, that's why yoga's good for you. Should I keep reading on? I like this. I feel like I'm a fucking teacher. There's one on the mind. So I'm, there's like 313 pages. I'm only going to read a few. But this is me trying to convince everybody listening to this shit that you should take up yoga. It's really good for you. Okay, this is on the breath. As with other styles of yoga, breathing is a vital part of yin practice. The purpose of the breathing is to elicit calm and relaxation and to activate the parasympathetic nervous system, which, sing, 
signals, which signals to the body that you are okay and not in danger. When you are in a stressful situation, the sympathetic nervous system automatically kicks in because your body is concerned about keeping you safe. When the system is activated, stress hormones are released, your heart rate increases, your muscles become tense, your blood pressure rises, and your breathing becomes rapid. This is the opposite of what you want to experience when practicing yin yoga. The parasympathetic nervous system, on the other hand, allows us to be calm and present in body and mind. What the fuck did this thing just do? I highlight body and mind. Calm in body and mind. It's a central theme as to why I'm trying to convince you to do yoga. A yogic breathing style that is tremendously helpful for relaxation and calmness is the Ujjayi breath. Um, translated as victorious breath and often called the ocean breath, the Ujjayi technique involves guttural breathing during, with you, during which you contract the glottis in the back of the throat to produce a soft hissing sound for the exhalation. In more rigorous yang-like yoga practices, the expelling of the breath in ujjayi can be harsh or loud. In yin, the objective is to keep the breath soft, rhythmic, and quiet. If that is not achievable for you with ujjayi breathing, you can always use a calm, quiet breath with long inhalations and exhalations instead, which is pretty much what I always do in mindfulness. So there's a lot of parallels between this and mindfulness note that you can tell the difference between when i am reading and commentating and this i am now commentating back to reading though they are often linked together yin yoga is not the same as restorative yoga restorative yeah restorative yoga the intent of restorative yoga is full relaxation and surrender to the contrary the nature of the yin practice is stillness and presence oh, i love that just stillness of mind and presence being in that moment, loving the moment for it, what it is. In yin practice, you are tuning in instead of tuning out. That's why I like this stuff. Well, who wants to tune out? What the fuck is that? When time slows down. So this is when time slows down. Yin poses are typically held for three to five minutes, but you can hold them for as long as 20 minutes. Your experience of time in a pose can vary from day to day depending on how you are feeling physically or emotionally. If you find it hard to stay in a pose once you've found your edge, it's best to come out of it. Stillness, not pain, is what's required. Try setting a time... Oh, you fucking bastard. Just... Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Try setting a timer so you can stay focused in the practice. If your timer goes off and you want to hold the pose longer, go for it. Just be mindful of not overdoing it. Some signs that may indicate you have pushed your body too far are physical pain, spasms, tightness, or feeling out of alignment. If these appear, try backing off in the poses. Instead of taking a full expression of the pose, try a more moderate version and decrease the whole time. Gradually work your way back to longer holds. If it's altogether too difficult to practice at all, Take care of yourself and give your body a break from practice for as long as is necessary. I like doing this. I'm going to read more often on YouTube. It's good practice. For me. Speaking. Reading. Anyway. But obviously, with what I'm trying to get you to do, I want you to take up yoga. People need yoga. Us Australians are always on the edge. Yoga's good for us. Oh, that's chapter two. Fuck, I've almost read you a whole chapter. What the fuck is going on? Yes, yeah, so I've essentially read you chapter one of this book. And there's like a whole bunch of other chapters. I've only read like 10 or so pages of 313. Where the fuck are you going? Sorry, I'm just scrolling up. The mind. So this is about the mind. Let me scroll back down. This thing keeps on fucking around. What the fuck is this thing doing? Tune... Oh my god, I'm going to punch this fucking computer. Sorry, once... <laughs> Tuning into what is happening in the body during a yin practice will likely trigger a multitude of fluctuations in the mind. Amen to that. You may experience feelings like boredom, discomfort, or even anxiety. Try to stay with those feelings and remember everything's okay. Try to... Oh, no, I already read that. There's no need to chastise yourself for the various thoughts and feelings that arise as you engage in this practice. 
yeah, that's right. Like, most people start meditating and they think like, what the fuck's going on? Why am I feeling this? Why am I thinking this? It's not working. That's the whole point. You've got to be patient with the process. You, know, you don't just do yoga in one day and expect a result. Like, fuck. Do you do gym for six months and expect a result? Jesus Christ, it took me fucking 10 years to bench press 220 kilos. So you've got to like put up with it. You know, this is the bench pressing of the brain. A lot more fucking hard than the bench pressing. Part of maintaining stillness is accepting the impermanent nature of the thoughts that come up during the long holds. To help regulate mind chatter, return to your breath. As you slow and deepen your breathing, you will likely discover that your mind quiets as well. Oh, why the fuck do you keep doing that? Additionally, your relationship to your thoughts about yourself and how they relate to your yoga practice may change the more you engage in yin. You may learn that you actually have the fortitude to handle a challenging pose. You may also learn that staying present and listening to the messages of your body your body communicates during the practice leads you to become more in tune with your body off the mat as well. Yin yoga does wonders for opening the body and it also helps us open the mind and understand ourselves, how we view ourselves. Yoga does that. Mindfulness especially, it does that. You just, introspection, it's beautiful. You just sit there and think. And you bear with it. You be patient. You don't need to punch things. You don't need to punch yourself. You don't need to kickbox someone's face. You just be patient and you just introspect and be mindful. You know, what is that thought? Why am I thinking about an octopus strangling my car? What the fuck is going on? You know, just be patient. Just think about those things. You know, well, a lot of weird thoughts go through my mind. I was once at TAFE and imagining my teacher, who was much elder, much older than me, and a male, naked. I, to this day, I haven't really understood why I was picturing a relatively older man naked, who was my teacher. It just came into my head, and these things I remember. I remember things very vividly when they're you know, important things to remember. Yeah. And picturing a teacher naked is something that I'll never forget. So that's what introspection is. You know, Why in God's good name did I envisage my TAFE teacher teaching me architecture, who's about 60, 65, naked? I'm not gay. I'm very, very straight. I was interested in architecture and for some reason, this most antithetical thought came into my mind. And I highlight antithetical thoughts because most of the problems we have in thinking are due to antithetical notions. What we do as humans as a type of, not defense mechanism, but understanding mechanism is relate the opposite state to something to understand what it isn't. Not everyone does it so well, but I do it all the time. So, for instance, I would look at this man naked because I know that's exactly not the way I should look at him. And then my brain immediately zaps that thought with a negative emotion because that's the opposite of what's good. So that's why we do it. I know that. But now why I had to think about him being naked to do that, I, I don't know. It wasn't like it was something I needed to protect myself from. It wasn't. He wasn't like trying to rape me or anything. I mean, fuck, I, to this day that... That's, that's one of those questions that I still wonder. Why the fuck did I imagine my male TAFE teacher, a bloke I like, like as in he's a, he's a great bloke, top bloke, but why did I imagine him naked? No, I haven't got an answer for that yet. But that's the beauty of mindfulness. You get to, you get to think about all these things. You really get to think about it carefully. So be mindful. Understand why you do what you do. Understand it very well. And be patient with it. Do it for six months. Do it for 12 months. If there's no results after 12 months and you're worse, then stop doing it. And take up jackhammering, maybe boxing, break a wall. Maybe you're that type. I don't know. You, only you know yourself. But I highly advise yoga. It's helped me. Uh, when I was a teenager, I was very, 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 very angry. I Everything I... Um, every time I disagreed with something or didn't like something, I would... Try to bash it, break it, knock it down. And, yeah, I'm not even going to go any further than that. <laughs> I did a lot of naughty stuff. Uh, sometimes bins went through people's windows and over the house. Very bad stuff. But I just, that's, you know, it's your 
typical Australian male. What the fuck can I say? It was young, dumb, and full of something. Um, so you've got to, yeah, you've got to take all these things into account. So I've been doing mindfulness now since 2018, since a really odd incident. I knew then and there I was just too angry. There was this incident that occurred um, where I wanted to kill someone. And that was the first time I ever had that feeling in my life. Um, yeah, no, I, I'm, I, I'm open about it. I, I actually admitted it to the police. I actually wanted to kill the person. I, 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 I this big six foot four or five fucking giant prick, whatever he was, boxer. I wanted to kill him. Now we got into a confrontation. I started hitting him, and I don't know why he got scared. He ran off. He was fucking like six inches bigger than me. Although I'm probably more built than he was. But anyway, he, I, I presume to this day that he was an expert boxer because of his stance and his height and who he was. And, but I'm not going to go any further than that. The point is, I, he was ripping into me. He, uh, I was ripping into him. And then I just lost my plot and I wanted to kill him. If I got my hands on him and he didn't kill me first or beat me, which is a possibility, I would have actually tried to kill him. I was actually ready to rip out his throat with my hands. And I don't think that's civilized. I... I knew then and there that I did wrong, not in my actions. I had every right to defend myself. It was actually all self-defense. Uh, but my brain exploded. It literally exploded. I just After that, my brain just went into another dimension and wanted to kill everything. Uh, but not everything, like him, but it just it was really angry. It was focused on killing him. I didn't know him. I never met him before. I don't know nothing about him. But he just made me that angry. I wanted to kill him. So I knew then and there that, you know, Yoga and mindfulness and all this sort of stuff is something I really need. And over the years, it's been five years. It's actually, it's been nearly five years because that happened, that incident happened at the start of 2018. Uh, after five years of really practicing mindfulness and yoga, I don't have that anger anymore. I've actually learned how to successfully, full success, 100% success. I've no doubt about that. I've, I've actually learned how to transform all that negative energy into a positive reality, a positive future. I, I never did that as a kid. So that explosion in 2018 was just nothing more than what I did my whole life, whether it was on the football field, running, or you know, taking my anger on things I didn't like or didn't agree with. I just, it's a fucking, it's a transformation. It's great. So I really recommend yoga and mindfulness to all those angry cunts because you might, you might think it's not for you, but I was probably an angrier cunt than you. Um, so <laughs> you need to you need to be very honest with yourself. It's not a, it's not unmanly to do yoga or to practice mindfulness. You're not going to be teased at the pub. Um, you know, us men need it. It's actually a very good thing. It's it's very chivalrous. Honestly, I, I I've been looking at this shit for nearly five or six years. It's very chivalrous. It's very you know I'm a man and I've got to be a gentleman. I've got to be honest about what kind of wanker I can be, and it's time to be a bit more chivalrous. And I can be a very great wanker even today. Um, that uh, yoga hasn't fixed that. Um, it has fixed my anger, though. So maybe I need to fix that one day. Maybe a woman will fix that for me. I don't I actually. I don't believe she will. I think a woman will make it worse for me. Um, I've got a bit of years to develop that. Anyway, um, yeah, do, do try yoga. It's very good for you. And don't confuse it with yoga. Don't go to the fucking. Don't go to Woolies and try and buy yoga. Not going to work. <laughs>